This lesson is going to be a review of factoring and especially factoring by grouping and using greatest common factors, GCFs. You're going to need to be really good at factoring. Um, I know that some of you have different experiences from past classes with factoring and it's just plain and simple. We just need everybody in class to know how to factor without very many tiers. So we're gonna just come together and review it here. All right, so I've given you a note sheet and it has several examples on it that I'm gonna work through. So you can just follow right along with me, but these are the examples I'm gonna be following. The first example asks us to factor out the GCF and we know GCF stands for the greatest common factor. which you have some experience with, we're just talking about what can I divide evenly into both of the terms of the polynomial, or if there's more than, more than two terms, all the terms of the polynomial. And so as we look for the GCF, we're just gonna ask ourselves really one factor at a time, looking at first probably the coefficient factors, the 15 and the nine of these terms, what's a common value that would divide evenly into both of those, and not just common, but the biggest one we can find. So this is gonna be three here. You guys have seen this before. Three divides into 15, three also divides into nine. And then we move to the x or the variable factors. So we have x cubed, which means there's three factors of x, and x squared, which means there's two factors of x. So common to both of those is the lower number, the x squared. Then a parenthesis is created so we can write down the other factor. And the other factor is whatever was left over after pulling out the greatest common factor. It's found by doing 15 divided by three, and the other factor would be five. And at the same time, x cubed had uh, x squared pulled out, which leaves one remaining factor of x in there. So five x is the leftover term. Bring down the plus sign, and then move to the next term with the same process. Nine divided by three leaves a three in there, and x squared with x squared pulled out means that it's just the constant three. So this is the factorization from the GCF being pulled out of the first example. Now the same process happens whether there's just two terms or in this case three terms, you can do it with any number of terms. You're gonna go coefficients first, look at the coefficients of all three terms and ask what's the biggest value you could pull out of there as a factor. So I'm thinking that probably four is gonna, no, never mind, four isn't gonna work. I just realized four does not go into 42. Let's see, how about six? I, six yeah, six goes into both of those. Six goes into 42 seven times and six goes into 48 eight times. So I'm gonna take six out from the coefficients, and then I move my attention to the x's. x squared, uh, linear x to the first power, and an x cubed. The most I can get out of all of those is the x that I see here, the first power. And then I move to the y's. So I've got just a single y factor, three repeat factors of y there, and a single y factor again. So the only thing common to all three is a y parentheses and let's write down what we still have in the first term. 12 divided by 6 is going to leave 2. x squared with one of the x factors pulled out means there's a second x factor in there and all of the y factors have come out. So just 2x is my fact, my term for the first, my remaining term for the first term. That was a mouthful. Okay, the next one is negative 42. Now we factored out a six, so I'm thinking dividing. 42 divided by six is gonna leave me seven, and it's negative, so I better put negative seven. X has already come out. Y cubed only had one of the Y factors pulled out, so there's still a Y squared factor in there. And finally, the last term, bring down the plus, and same process, 48 divided by six is eight. X cubed divided by X leaves X squared and y divided by y just leaves one, so none of the y's are still in there, and there is my factorization for exercise two. All right, now our next goal is to factor by grouping, and grouping is a nice technique when you have four terms. Notice I've got these four terms here, and my process is this. I'm gonna group them two by two. So I'm gonna take the first two terms and kind of think of them as one part of the problem. Then I'm gonna group the second two terms in the same way, and now I can just pay attention to one group at a time. What I do first is look for a GCF of the first group. So the GCF of this is X. There's an X in both of those. So I pull out my X, parenthesis what's left, X squared with X pulled out leaves another X, 
and then the second term is positive, so I bring down that plus, and 3x with the x taken out is going to leave the 3. Now, as you factor, you should always be thinking backwards as well. Think if you were to distribute and multiply the x through, would you get what you had here? So does x times x really make x squared? And does x times 3 give you the 3x? And it does. So that means you're doing it right. Now we move to the second group. So we grouped and factored this one. Now we move to the second group and do the same process. We're going to bring down that positive. And the 4 and the 12, our GCF there is going to be 4. So we're going to bring the positive out. And you do need to write down the sign. So be sure you write down that plus and the 4. And then what's left in there is an x plus 12 with 4 divided out is going to leave me a 3. Now, the thing to notice when you've got that is now you're going to step back and you're going to look at the whole thing overall. What you really have here is two sets of factors. The first set is here, the x and the x plus 3. And then separated by that plus, that's why it's so important to bring this out, is the second set of factors, 4 and x plus 3. And you'll notice that both sets have x plus 3 in them, which means this qualifies x plus 3 as a GCF. So the GCF of these two sets of factors is x plus 3, which means I'm going to pull it out. It's a whole quantity coming out. Then in parentheses, I'll write what's left. So as I consider this first set of factors, the x plus 3 has been pulled out. That means the only thing left is this x that's sitting in front of it. So that goes here. Then out of my second factor, same question. I pulled out the, uh, the x plus 3. So what's still there is the plus 4. So that positive comes down and with the 4. And here is my factorization from those four terms. All done by grouping. OK, let's see that again in this example. So I've got four terms. I'm going to group them. I believe there was a typo on your paper. Look at that closely. That should say negative 12x, if this is the one I'm thinking of. I know there was a typo on one of them, so it might be this one. So I'm going to group it. Here we go. We're going to group the first two terms. We're going to group the last two terms. Out of the groups, we take out what's common. A 3 and a 12 means we have a common 3. x squared with x is also a common x. So 3x is our common factor from the first group, which leaves me another leftover factor of x, and then moving to my second term, minus 4. And you can check that by multiplication, see if it uh, multiplies back in. Now, the second group has a little bit of interesting things happening here. Nam namely, this is a negative term. So here's a rule of thumb and write this down. Anytime the first term is negative, you will be smart to factor that negative out. So I'm going to start by taking the negative out. And then I'll move to my 5 and 20. And common to those is a 5. And then I move to my x, which I see this term doesn't have an x, so I'm not going to be able to pull one out. That means it's time to start the leftover parenthesis. So we pulled out the negative and the 5. The leftover is the x here. And then moving to this positive 20 term. Remember, we pulled a negative out. So from that positive, we took a negative out. That means there's a second negative still in. And then 20 divided by 5 is 4. And you always should check that. Does negative 5 times negative 4 make a uh, positive 20? And it does. So you're good. Now, sit back and look at it overall. Is there anything in this set of factors that's also in this set of factors? And the sets are separated by the subtraction we see here. Over here, it was by the addition. Here, it's by the subtraction. I like to circle it so you can separate those out. Well, the x minus 4 is in both. So x minus 4 is one of the factors. That's, and it's common to both. That's why we're, this is the GCF, actually. That's the GCF, which means this is the leftover. So 3x minus 5 makes up the second factor. And you're done. All right, so next on your handout, you're going to notice there's some practice problems. So be sure you do those. Those will give you practice with GCF and by grouping. But there's also more to this lesson. Now, this is really the major goal I have for you in this lesson, which is to be able to factor trinomials three terms, not four. And you see one right here. We're going to factor this trinomial. This is the stuff that you guys have come from other classes and teachers, and you've all learned different ways to do it. So I'm not, a, I'm not um, opposed to any different way. Uh, there's lots of right ways to do it. 
But I am going to ask that for this lesson and this assignment that you do it by this method to practice the method because it will be an applicable method to other types of problems where your other versions would be a lot more difficult to use, your other methods of factoring. So everybody's gonna try this by grouping today and, and then you'll be good to go. All right, so this method actually starts with the Xbox method that many, many of you have learned and studied. We make this X and then if you remember what goes up here, it's your A multiplied by your C. Now the A and the C remember are the coefficients uh, referring to these coefficients here, the A being the first one with the squared term and the C being the constant at the end. So let's actually list these out. A in this case is the two. B is the middle seven and C is the five that we see at the end. And so we're gonna find A times C, which is the two multiplied by the five. A times C here is 10. And if we were doing the Xbox method, we would put that 10 right up in the top of the X. The bottom of the X is filled in by the B value and B here was seven. And remember, you're going to try to multiply to get the value in the top. So we're going to multiply to get 10. And we're going to try to add to create the 7. Now we're on the hunt for those two integers that will work. Now I like to just think systematically. You guys are probably shouting right now at me which ones work. But sometimes it's harder to figure them out. So here's a systematic way to start listing. 1 times 10 makes 10. 2 times 5 makes 10. 3 does not make 10 four never makes 10 and five is already in our list here. So these are the factors of 10 and the one that would create the positive seven if I combine them is the two and the five. I know, I know, you guys already do that. So the two integers are two and five. All right, now we are going to do the, the trick here. We're gonna rewrite the middle term, the middle term being the, being the B times X. And we're going to rewrite it as the sum of the two terms whose coefficients are the integers found in step two. Well, all that means is this. We're going to take this middle term, which is 7x, and we're going to split it. We're going to write it as two terms instead of the one. And the two terms are going to be 2x plus 5x. 2x plus 5x makes 7x. And these aren't just magic numbers. These are the very numbers we decided from our Xbox method we were going to use. So we split the middle term and we rewrite the rest of it, just bringing everything else down here. Now, what do we have? Well, we've got a four term polynomial. So that means that we should be able to factor it by grouping. So let's take a look at the groups. The first group is these two terms. Is there anything common in those terms? I see a two, I see an X, that's my GCF. So in parentheses, what's left? Just one X left in the first term and nothing left in the second term except for the factor of one, which is gonna make sure we get two X times one is gonna make the two X. Okay, next group, same story. Out of this group, I'm gonna take a positive five and I wanna make sure to write down the positive. So positive five, write it down. And then in parentheses, there's still an X in the first term and a one in the last term. Stepping back, do I see out of the whole overall problem, is there anything common in this set and this set? The adding we put right here is separating them. We see in both of them this x plus one. x plus one is one of my factors. It's the GCF of these two sets, the leftovers being right here. So the second factor is created by the two x plus the five. And you're done, there's your factorization. All right, so give this a chance if you've never seen it before by doing this process. We're gonna see a couple more examples and we are gonna practice. I know, again, some of you have done this factoring a different way. I just want you to try this method and see where it leads you. All right, in our next example, we're gonna factor the trinomial. Right now it's three terms, but not for long, three terms. 6x squared minus 13x plus 6. So our a, b, and c are 6, negative 13, and 6. And I'm going to make that x box. I think it's nice to organize it that way. So we take a times c, and that's 36. That lives up here. And then we take the b, which is the negative 13. We want to multiply to get 36. I like to put a little dot right there to remind me that's multiply. And adding is going to create negative 13. So let's hunt for those integers. 
what are our factors that we can choose from? 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12. 4 goes into 36 nine times, 5 does not go into 36, but 6 does. So we'll have 6 and 6, that's going to end our list. And now we're looking for factors that will create negative 13. Now, of course, none of these is going to create a negative when I combine it, unless they are negative. And in order to make this a positive 36, both of them need to be negative. So which of these will make a 13 with both of them negative? I think I see it right here. As long as I use negative 4 and negative 9. So our two integers are negative 4 and negative 9. And now it's time to split the middle term. I feel like we should be wearing safety goggles like we're doing some kind of splitting of fractions or splitting of atoms or something in the chem lab. We will not be using goggles, but we will split that 13x that's in the middle into a negative 4x and a negative 9x. Again, those two numbers are the numbers we just found from our Xbox method. The rest of it just comes right on down, the 6x squared in the front and the plus six at the end. All right, it is grouping time. So we're gonna put these first two in a group. And out of that group, what can we get as a GCF? Let me take a two and an X. So two X is coming out, parentheses for what's still in there. Two X pulled out of six is gonna give me three with X still in there. Two X out of four, so that's a negative still in, but two has, I guess it's just two. Let me check that. Two x times three x is six x squared, and two x minus two is negative four x. All right, we're good. Second group. Here's another chance to see it. That first term is negative, so be sure you pull the negative out. The numerical value for the coefficient is going to be a three, and the final, there's no x I can get out, so the remaining factor is a three x. That'll create 9x if I multiply it. And now the negative here can be tricky, but we pulled a negative out. That's going to require a second negative, negative 2 in this case. Now negative 3 times negative 2 can make equal to negative, uh, positive 6, positive 6. Okay, as I look back at the whole overall now, I notice that both of those have the 3x minus 2 as a common factor. So if I take that out of each one, these guys here are going to be leftovers. My two factors are 3x minus 2 and 2x minus 3. Ta-da! There's my answer. Woohoo! All right. Hope you're with me. Last example. We're going to do this thing again. We start with three terms. We're going to split it into four, and we're going to group it all back up. Okay, so look at your x box here. Your a, b, and c, 2, negative 1, negative 6. Multiply a and c together. That product is negative 12. And when we look for our numbers, we're going to make sure they add to negative 1. So we want to multiply to get negative 12 and add to get negative 1. Now, if you can do that in your head, that's great. I'm going to list it for your notes here. So we want negative 12 as a final product. That can happen if we use a 1 and a 12. Yes, one of them needs to be negative, but for now I'm just going to write them. 1 and 12 would make 12. Um, 2 times 6 would make a 12. 3 times 4 would make a 12. And that's the end of the line. To get a negative 12, one of them needs to be negative. And keep in mind, they also have to add to negative 1. So that's going to be this pairing with the negative applied on the 4. All right, our integers that we'll use are 3 and negative 4, and now we are ready to go split a fraction. Put on your safety goggles, break the middle term up into a negative 3, not negative 3, positive 3, what am I doing? Positive 3x to be specific, and negative 4x. There's the split. That creates a negative 1x. Bring down the beginning and end terms. And then count them up with pride, you've got four terms. All split and ready to be grouped together. Okay, first group. 
2x plus 3x, 2x squared plus 3x. I'm not going to be able to get a coefficient out of that. So let me move to the x's and I see I can take out 1x and that will leave me with 2x plus 3. Now if you got that, move to the second group. And here I think you ought to pause the video and just try that one on your own. Come back to me when you've got it. Or check with your neighbor. I'm just going to keep babbling, talking. How's the weather today? Anybody hear any good jokes? Okay, sorry for distracting you. Keep working. All right, hope you got it. All right, so the thing I want you to see is did you take the negative out? Did you see the negative that's there? Did you take it out? and then move to the coefficients. So four and the six, did you pull out a two? Did you have a parenthesis next? And inside another two X, and that's negative, but it was taken out. What does that mean this here? Positive three, hopefully you got that. You can check it, does negative two times two X equal negative four X, and negative two times positive three is negative six. Yes, indeed. All right, now, if you're not already at the answer, let me catch up to you, or let me bring you with me. How many of you are at the answer? Raise your hand, brag to your neighbors and friends. Pat yourself on the back. Okay, now check your answer. Common is the three or the two X plus three. That's one of your factors. Leftover is the second factor, X minus two that's sitting in front of that. All right, now pat yourself on the back. Leave your neighbors alone. Now one question before we end this video that I get a lot is, when we get these two integers, does it matter, or how do you know what order to put them in when you split the fraction? Uh, the, I keep calling it a fraction. You're splitting the term, I'm sorry. And so the question is, how do you know this is the order? The, the answer to that is, you don't know, but it also doesn't matter. So let me show you that. If I came to this problem, and I changed the order up, so I did 2x squared, over here of minus six, but when I split the negative x, I put the negative 4x first, and the second term was the 3x that was positive. So just flip-flop the order right here into this one. Now my grouping is going to be these two terms, which common to those is a 2x with x minus 2 left. You can check that. And common to now this second group that I'm going to group here. Common to that, this is a positive, so I'm going to pull the positive out, and it's going to be, allow me to get a 3 out of there as well. So it's positive 3 I'm pulling out, and remaining in there is an x minus 2. As I step back and look at my overall, I've got two sets of factors, and there's these matchies right here, x minus 2, and the leftover ones right here, 2x plus 3. So, do I get the same answer? Yeah, except I think the interesting part is, is what was remaining and what was the common factor. So we just flip-flop the order of these, these factors here. Either way, it's the same set of factors. So you're good. Now, one last thing before I leave you, or I guess two last things. Make sure you do this, these practice problems on the last page. And one word of warning, you do need to get the matches in the end. So if you were able to satisfy the Xbox problem and find the numbers that would work, but here in this step you don't get a match, that means you did something incorrect and you should go back a couple steps and see if your algebra is wrong somewhere. Otherwise, factoring by grouping is a nice kind of step-by-step -step process and I really like it. So I hope you will practice it and good luck to you. I will see you soon.